Okay, so, so I have been extremely lucky, first of all, of course, to be born with a Danish passport, um, meaning that that I, I take everything for, for granted, in, especially with, um, with social welfare, social stability, and everything a person on this planet could dream of, basically, was just given to me with a passport. On top of that, I was super lucky. It's kind of strange. I, lived, I grew up in a home with no conflicts. I found my mom and dad loved each other, and I was the single child, so I, I think I'm a Buddha. I have this idea that I can do everything. Then we were three guys who discussed what to do when we were 19 in, a, in our apartment where we had too many pizza boxes and yeah, that life. And we watched Melrose Place. How many of you guys remember Melrose Place? Yeah, I mean, okay, you, are, you have some age though. Um, and we, we decided that it looked cool to have an advertising agency because there were so many beautiful people there. <laughs> yeah, it's actually true. So we. We went, we went to Copenhagen and started an advertising agency and it became the third largest in Scandinavia. And my partners are now married to the receptionists and have a lot of children. <laughs> um, we were super lucky to sell it to Leo Burnett, the um, advertising conglomerate. And um, I went on and, and wanted to, to try to do this, this thing that I saw in 99 called venture capital. It was too good to be true, you could actually get capital and you wouldn't get to jail if you blew the money up. Remember that Mr. Dunlop who invented the, the, the way that rubber is that you're able to do rubber so it become, it can become a wheel. He went four times to jail because he lended some money. It was not called venture capital. He told some people he could do this thing. He lended some money. He couldn't pr deliver on the promise and he had to go to jail. But we have venture capital on top. So I was super lucky that I had a little bit of money. I met two guys who wanted to do a music service and call it Kazaa. And they talked about some pretty cool guys in Estonia called Blue Moon, who were like wizards. That's the people you think started Skype. <laughs> um, but then once we went to, in, I was in London hanging out with these two guys, they called Nicholas and Janus, very special characters. Um, and we went to um, Western Union because uh, Janus's mother had to transfer some money so that via Western Union so that some money could go back to Estonia to pay for the coders and uh, it didn't really work out. There was no money. And Nicholas said, now it's time to expand. <laughs> so um, miraculously, I, was, uh, I offered them to pay their apartments. I got some shares in Skype and I kept on starting different weird companies. Um, so, a very long story short, while I'm trying to do this limbo for my computer to come. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I also managed to make, to make a, a shitload of money. And um, in 2008, I blew all of them on a newspaper project because I thought it was the thing I should do in life. So I, I lost everything again, which was extremely healthy. And because I was, I was often thinking whether I should go over water or on the side of it. Um, oh, we're here. So um, then I, I went into FinTech, did a couple of companies in that, uh, and uh, just to make some money, basically, um, so I could pay the bills. And then I found out, and my kids told me very clearly that they wanted me to, it, it's cool that I travel constantly and, 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 and do crazy things, but they, they were starting to talk about something that, that had a purpose. So I have the last uh, three years been looking at, we always look at industries that are for disruption and the most obvious industry we've been looking at for 15 years was of course construction, because I mean, construction's ha construction has had a 1% increase in, in efficiency per year for the last 20 years in Scandinavia, in, in the Nordics. If that was your phone, you would have a dial pad today. It's, it's insane. So we, so we wanted to, um, to start, um, I thought about starting a modular housing company with a global off kickoff, and I called some of my architect friends. I, I took some investment from our former prime minister and, and created a group who wanted to do good. And let's start with this. See if it works. Why did buildings could simply pop up where you needed them? a 
design system that allows people to realize big ideas in a matter of months. Designer houses, stylish condos, and luxury suites can literally pop up without delays, bureaucracy, and red tape. They are made to keep up with the pace of a city, to solve problems and seize opportunities, and to integrate the latest in technology and arts. It's buildings that won't be old before they're built. Buildings that don't have to stay when they are passé. Postel pop-ups are democratic and responsible. They are designed to make the exceptional affordable to more of us and sustainable for all of us. It's sweets for the people. The pop-up movement will be introduced to the world as a chain of designer suites available for rent through Airbnb. Everyone with a taste for adventure will have an opportunity to pop up somewhere completely new. And anyone who owns a piece of land can become a luxury hotel owner overnight. It's a new approach to architecture, but who knows, it might lead to a new culture of living, a pop-up culture. Because with Postal Pop-Ups, anywhere can happen. Yeah, so we obviously worked in advertising. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so um, to how, how do you get a, something like this started? Um, and I, I hope there's some entrepreneurs here who don't take me too serious, but get some inspiration from this. Because, of course, you have to have a half good idea. I mean, there's nothing new here. We have 8,000 8, companies. I just saw a company on my way here who's also doing modular homes. But... It's, it's often about having that extra self-confidence, um, and I still have no idea where it came from, but, but being able to, to mobilize some people who will follow you. So there is this, um, this saying that um, a leader without followers is just a guy taking a walk. Yeah? So we, 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 I love disruption. And here we wanted to try to mix doing good and profit. It's kind of hard. But overall, I think we're all soon getting to the fact that there is no planet B. We have to kind of stop or reverse what's going on with the whole carbon emission crisis that we're facing. So we wanted to build carbon neutral and somehow give a take at this idea of tourism 2.0. Because remember that we've seen a growth of, of uh, 170% over the last... 68 years in population, but in tourism, we're like 5,500%. And we don't know how to handle this. So we basically, we're probably in the business of, of protecting tourists from other tourists. I mean, you know what you, when you have a dinner party, you, you know if you invite 10 people, you check up if you have forks and knives for 10 people. But here you open an airport and you let that people flooding in and, they, and, they, and we killed a lot of beautiful places in the world. So with, that, with, with, with this idea that we should also be able to leave without a trace, we, we started a, an interesting journey four years ago. We, we, we went with our beautiful slideshows and our movies around the world, got people to start looking for land, but also a learning um, from, um, from quite a lot of years in, in, a, in startups. Instead of giving our friends the chance to sell this thing, We turned it around, so they had to pay us four or five hundred thousand euros to get the franchise because I saw this movie from the McDonald's guys, how this guy he did the franchise, so I, I, I could avoid to take in venture capital. And venture capital is the best thing that ever happened, but most of the guys who actually have a venture fund are not too smart. They're just those guys who knew how to do the paperwork and get that fund going, yeah? So we can avoid them, and at the same time, we could somehow go into this idea of, of selling a whole sustainable ecosystem, but in, in essence, we are in the business of selling sleep. But we are also in the business of selling a design experience. Because if you look at one of the biggest trends that, or coolest things that probably ever happened in tourism is Airbnb. The whole idea, I mean, seven years ago, there was no Airbnb in Copenhagen. And now we have four million hotel nights but there's one million Airbnb nights on top of that. I mean, tourists coming in that, that is actually using our existing infrastructure called your, our own homes. 
So, so, so this whole sharing economy, we also like. So looking at the numbers, going through all of this, looking at this mega trend that people probably, everyone with a brain would probably like to do something to, to help saving the world or at least stopping the, the negative trends. We, uh, we see a big movement from, from this Dubai bling bling to, to people want to go to the, of course, urbanization will never stop. But Lego has done a study say, seeing that, that they have trouble selling much more Lego to kids in the urban areas because there's no room. The, 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 the apartments are getting so small that Lego can't be on the floor. But at the same time, they've seen that many of these younger families, new families, they want to have a place somewhere in nature. They, want, they actually prefer a smaller room in the urban environment but they want a, a larger place or at least a place in nature. And that combined with the fact that we have, a, it looks like 150,000 people in Germany are turning vegans every month. I mean, it's a sausage eating, loving, beer drinking country. That mega trend is nearly impossible to, to overlook. So what, what we did coming with our concept, making it simple over over Scandinavia and putting too extreme uh, amount of Scandinavian feel and touch into this, making it modular, putting it up all over the world, was not new. We just, uh, it's kind of an imperialism, but if we could do it in a good way, and then at the same time, know what's organic and what's biodegradable uh, and, and what's recyclable of the materials, and we can build these micro factories so we can actually also enable the locals to build these things because it's just an, a big version of IKEA. It's not that hard. And we, we give the, the drawings away and then we also arrive with the financing. So we're basically a fabrication, transportation and assembly and a, some kind of a sleep factory. Yeah? And this whole idea that, that anywhere can happen, but most important that we can leave without a trace. I mean, I, I, I w we can't look at, I, can't, I have four kids. I, I can't look at, at them, and they're coming back from school. Last time we went uh, traveling, they, 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 they had a small demonstration because they wanted to see me buying carbon credits, I mean, against the flight. They, they believe in this shit more than any of us probably do. <laughs> so, yeah, for the critical viewer, you, I mean, it's obvious we want to be in... Um, remote places, we want to be able to, to do good, but how do we, how, how, how yeah, after a, a year of, of, a year into this uh, thing, we understood that we also had one more task. We couldn't not, we could not just do the buildings. We also had to be in the most remote areas. I mean, we're in um, Patagonia, the craziest places in Australia, Iceland. There was never any sewage system where we came. So we also had to invent a sewage system in a box. And um, that looks uh, something like this. Mm, let me see. Available power, water, and utility system for 10 households could pop up anywhere. Off-grid independence to live wherever you want. Yeah, there's that. But it's also very good business. We needed to solve the power, water, and utility for Pashtal pop-up, a new upscale housing concept invented to live anywhere, all around the world, even completely remote. And what we came up with is the fifth element, a sustainable off-grid utility pop-up, generating power from solar panels on the Pashtal rooftops. With a clever water and utility system that both recycles water generates new water out of thin air and handles all sewage. Starting from a standard 40-foot shipping container, the setup is 4,000 liters of efficiently stored black water or sewage, 8,000 liters of gray water for recycling, four 80 kilowatt batteries storing all electricity from the panels on the rooftops with a humidifier generating 2,000 liters every day. And lastly, 12,000 liters of fresh water capacity. Everything you need for power, heating, cooling, water, and utility. Everything you need for living. Now, 
Of course, we will supply all postal suites as they pop up around the world, because that's what we set out to do. But just imagine the opportunities from here on, handling all kinds of events and accommodations, student housing in fast-growing regions, aiding help workers in disaster zones, supplying light and electricity in refugee camps, or even rapidly improving living conditions in developing countries. All in one package, ready to pop up wherever it's needed. The fifth element, sustainable off-grid utility pop-up. Yeah, there's no end to what you have to invent if you really want to take over the world. <laughs> On top of that, we also had to think about how to actually, how to, what should people do when they come to our locations? How should we activate both the kids and the adults? And we saw that um, Airbnb, not only are they one of the fastest growing companies ever in their rental business, but their experience business is, is, is growing faster than their rental business. So also integrating to that, we of course had to, to give, our, give it a shot, understand how can we get this Peter guy around the world to actually arrive to our locations as, as a DJ in residence two or three weeks, because he's really annoying on the longer run. But it would be great to have him two or three weeks to cook and really show off and use the locals and interact with the locals so we get that ecosystem going. But most important, when you want to build something like this, is probably the fact that you need to have a lot of people working with you. Also, I, I wanted to show this because this is too good to be true. So this is in Haiti. One of our friends bought this amazing piece of land with seven beaches. And yeah, you can read this yourself. It's too good to be true, yeah? It's where Columbus freaking <laughs> came with his shipwreck. So these are the places that we're going. But how, do, how can I make this happen without, you know, giving blowjob to venture capitalists? That's because we've, we've, we've been pretty serious about this idea of making a movement. So if you, um, and it, it's only for those of you who actually are smart enough to write bit.ly bit slash eco war. We can, we offer everybody who's crazy enough to want to join us to use maximum 10% of their time because I don't want to come into a conflict with your husband or wife. And participate in this idea of changing the world just, you know, a little bit. Doing it with, with passion and following me, basically, and my team. So I have a real chairman and, and some smart people who are not too fucked up. But this idea of, of going to a couple of house, 100 or 300,000 rooms around the planet where we could all actually go and stay with a fairly good consciousness. That's my vision, so thank you very much for listening to my bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I was on time. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Morten. It was um, inspiring. Um, now, please sit down. Thank you. Uh, maybe there's one question from the audience before we go on. There's normally not. No? No? Okay. Oh, there is a question. So it's a little bit like when you want to uh, go and buy your first, uh, I mean, a new Volvo or whatever, you, you look at the cheap version, it's advertised at about 50,000 and you end up at around 280,000 if you want the full shebang and the spinning wheels. Um, but it, it, that's, that's the, 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 yeah, the core. Um, no, so, um, and we even had to invent the, the, our own sewage cables because no one, I mean, the construction industry are sleeping and crazy. Because if, um, if you and I will buy a piece of land here in Estonia, I'm going to, watch, uh, to see some beautiful land and some woods uh, this afternoon and try to see if somebody will buy it for me. Then we would have to, 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 to just to build uh, 10, 10, household, 10, 10 homes, just the cabling of the sewage will be about a couple of hundred thousand euros. 
So we had to invent the cables that can, they can just ensure that we can take um, yeah, fresh water up to the suites, we can take the shit and the pee back, we can clean everything, and then we can send the clean water. We don't want to shower and drink that, but we can easily flush. So 33% of the water that all of you guys are going to use today is from flushing. Your royal outcome is flushed with, clean, with drinking water in most countries. Yeah? And, 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 and that is all staged, so you can have the cables, you can have the, just the, the pumping system. You can also have our, our water treatment system. We call it a bioreactor because, of course, we don't use chemicals. And then having this uh, dehumidifier, which is an, um, it's something that the Americans are using. It, it will not work here to take water out of thin air in, uh, in winter here in, in, in the Nordics. But around the equator, it will work every day. You can see we always, we always sweat. I mean, there's enough water in, in the air. But, but all of that is, is starting at 135,000 euros, but it's very hard to get it without getting to 200,000 euros. But, but we can lease it in, because it's utility. I mean, how many of you guys have know exactly, in, in, on a, on down to the $50, how much you pay for utility per year? So there's a couple of guys who know, but you don't know what you're paying utility because it's a must. So, so we will lease it on a 20-year contract with some Danish uh, real estate financing. So it's for 30 homes, it's about $5 per month. And that seems to be very, I mean, possible to also, to, to also take that to, to Africa. But remember, we wanted to do homes. We just had to do this as a side project. Luckily, I did a couple of, uh, of hundred other stupid companies before. So it's not dangerous for us. But this will probably be a bigger company than, than, than our housing company. I or a movement. I want to be a movement. I, I have to take a break here because yeah. we, all, we also have to invite some more people on the stage now.